Hi, welcome to Ray's Sensation. And in this episode, I am going to be taking a look at this uh, book, Worst Movie Posters of All Time. And I'll let you know that this is a uh, British publication. I believe I got this at a, a bookstore at, down in Silver Spring uh, near DC. Uh, I think it was Wonder Books. Um, like I said, it's a British book. They had a a, a fair stack of them for like three bucks. So uh, somehow these books made it over here and then made it at, <laughs> made it to their shelves as a remaindered book. So I don't know what the story behind that was. Um, this is kind of like uh, the Medvid Brothers. I think that's their name. Medvid Brothers, you know, the Golden Turkey Award things where they're saying um, this book will sterilize you with fear. Um, and when they're saying worst movie posters of all time, uh, some of the posters are poorly designed, uh, but a lot of times they're just making fun of the, um, the basic subject, uh, or, you know, the fact that the movie was such a cheapo thing. I think many of these posters in here are, um, great. You'll notice the format, you know, a lot of times the, the British formats posters are different size. So you'll see elements that were in the uh, American posters and occasionally there'll be an American poster here, but a lot of these are in the different, um, you know, uh, it's more like a landscape uh, type uh, format as opposed to a portrait size, you know, portrait la um, layout of uh, American posters. Um, but anyway, so I'm just gonna go through this Real quick, we'll talk a little, it gives me an excuse to talk about these posters a little and about the uh, movies. And um, I think you'll probably agree with me that these are some pretty good uh, posters and even some of the movies are pretty good. Um, so uh, there they're comparing these posters, the ones that were designed by uh, fine artists who also were doing movie posters in Europe at the time. Well. Okay, great, but uh, here's what we got. That, those were for a different type of film. I think a lot of these posters fit. Now, this this is one hell of a busy poster. Um, so, for that reason, I'm not crazy about it. All these different, you know, there's just a lot going on. Uh, luckily, they don't, the, the monsters in Fire Maidens from Outer Space not very good, so it's best that you hide that picture there. But I mean, who's going to say Forbidden Planet is a bad poster? Um, is it kind of, you know, it's kind of a, a, an artsy, kind of cartoony, uh, you know, pop arty kind of looking thing there. Um, but it fits. It fits, and it's a good movie. Um, I, I don't know how much of a big classic it is. There's some goofy things about it that people overlook. Um, they kind of... <laughs> but I think it's a good movie. It's definitely worth watching, and I think that's a good poster. I really like this one for Devil Girl from Mars. Uh, definitely not a good movie, but that's a solid-looking poster. I really like that. Um, Queen of Outer Space, that's kind of another one where it's kind of uh, all over the place there. Um, you know, when you when it's in this format, it's much more likely to have things, you know, in the different corners and stuff. Um, it's it's kind of a fun one. Fiend without a face. I mean, that's that's a cheapo looking poster, but boy, it gets it across. That's a fun poster, I think. An invasion of the saucer men. I mean, come on, that is good stuff. Um, uh, Deadly Mantis. <laughs> That is a bit of a goofy poster, but, you know, hey, I think it put a lot of kids' uh, asses in the seats, you know? Uh, there's one for the Mysterians, the Japanese sci-fi thing. Um, some of these uh, posters are um, look like uh, paperback covers at the time. You know, the you know paperback covers were uh, all the rage, you know, in the 50s and 60s, and... Uh, so why not jump on the bandwagon with art that reminds people of those, those books. Um, now this, on the other hand, is a pretty terrible uh, poster. What expression is on that guy's face? 
<laughs> I don't know. Um, and this, the, the train action going on down here is pretty undramatic. Just all in all, this, this is, this one is a little lacking. Um, uh, Macumba Love, I always, you know, it was a long time after I saw this that I finally saw the movie. Uh, this made it look pretty cool. Look, uh, a skull-faced woman about to sacrifice a baby or something? You know, what the heck? What goes on there? Uh, and this looked like a female Tarzan movie. Of course, I used to watch the Tarzan movies all the time when I was a kid because I loved animal attack scenes. I loved when they were people were attacked by the uh, gorillas or the crocodiles or the lions or what have you. I liked all that stuff. Uh, so any chance to see those things. Um, Grizzly. So again, it's a different format for the uh, for the British poster. Um, I think this is cool. I think these they're very cartoony looking. Uh, matter of fact, that looks like the same. They cut out the picture. They drew the bear once and then cut out the picture and reused it in the second one here. But this Neil Adams, uh, this is the poster the way we saw it. You know, just this part here, uh, here in the U.S., this Neil Adams poster. That's that's great. <laughs> that's, that is a demonic looking grizzly bear. So I think that's a terrific one. And these are all a little bit so-so. Uh, uh, love that. Love that lettering. I don't, you know, here we're talking about uh, the, uh, the, the spectacular movies that have the big scenic, you know, taking advantage of shooting overseas and stuff like that over in Europe. And, and then they put, they reprinted these so small. I mean, come on. Not cool. Uh, here's another one where they've blown up one that definitely not that good. I mean, that the look on that woman's face, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's not so hot either. But look at the look at that. That's great. That's great. More great lettering on these. Um, man, that's a fantastic shot. I would definitely be seeing that. <laughs> Oh, and these are cool. You know, yeah, these are goofy looking and cheap looking, but that's these movies. And that, you know, that speaks to me. That makes me want to see these films. I think this is great. Those look like a lot of fun. I love the layout of these. Uh, that big sleep poster is really great. The movie is so boring. Um, that's a great, great one. Demons of the Swamp. Another great poster for something. And now you, you see these X certificates. Remember, the, these are uh, uh, in England. Uh, it is adults only for an X, but, it, you know, it didn't take much. I mean, almost every horror movie. You see, they, th this movie has so little excitement in it, so little going on, and yet it gets an X rating. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Adults only. Um, this is a blow-up of uh, Dr. Blood's Coffin, and I think that looks pretty cool. I like that one. Uh, the, that, that looks great. This all looks good to me. I mean, this is a little wonky with the Ghost in the Invisible Bikini, but these are great. And this is one of my favorite sleazy, dumb movies, uh, Lady Frankenstein. Somebody put out, it's been like, I don't know, it might even be 10 years ago now, a supposedly longer cut of this with more nudity and a little bit more violence. And so that's, since that's the calling, <laughs> that's why you go see this thing. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but I've never bothered to track it down. It's, a, it's not a good movie, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, that's a great poster. <laughs> Strategically placed Medal of Honor there, you know. Um, a Russ Meyer film. I guess they consider this bad because it's so in your face, kind of sleazy there, but uh, it works. Now, these are some pretty terrible ones here. Um, these are pretty cheapo ones for these uh, sex movies. All the Hollywood blue doesn't look bad. Some more great ones. Here's the thing is in the Beast of Hollow Mountain. 
they keep this their stop motion dinosaur in the dark for like two thirds of the movie. You don't see it. At least two thirds of the movie. And, but you're gonna put the the crazy but kind of lovable dinosaur right on the poster. So big on the poster there. Could have been a little. And uh, again, this is a good this is a good poster. The day of the trip is in a good movie. Um, some more good ones. Some more good horror ones that are only in here because they're cheap horror movies and they're selling it sensationalistically. Um, it conquered the world. Gets an X certificate. I mean, it just mean just means nothing really. It's crazy. There's the. I like this poster for the original Godzilla. I really. I like the weird way he looks and those weird big claws. That's great. That's a great poster. Uh, here's the thing is that um, one of the worst gorilla suits in cinema history uh, was used in King Kong vs. Godzilla. God, I was so angry when I saw this movie as a kid because um, King Kong, the original King Kong in 1933 was my favorite movie. And I liked Godzilla in those movies. But then when I saw how stupid they made King Kong look, I was really, really mad. This and King Kong Escapes made me not want to watch any of the Japanese suit movies for a long time. But, you know, I forgave them then. And I just, you know, just said to myself, okay, this is something totally different. You know, I just got to think of it as something totally different. And, you know, now I can watch them. Now I can have a laugh at it. But, but boy, I was not happy as a kid. That Kong looks so dumb. And here's the thing is, what it, my point was, even on the poster, he looks stupid. Um, these movies look a little boring to me. These posters look a little boring. Waterfront women. So, um, uh, Top schlock, the groove tube. Yeah. The Mad Adventures of Rabbi Jacob. <clears throat> and then Wild and Wonderful. So there's a look at that book. I hope you enjoyed it. Certainly not worst movie posters of all time. <laughs>